Hi, and welcome to another episode of Let's Talk Tobago. I'm Amadara Mills, and today we're coming to you from Hawksville House at Stonehaven Beach in Grafton. Over the next half hour, we'll explore this lovely villa together and keep you up to date on what's happening on the island as well. So let's get started with the headlines. We splash into the neighboring village of Blackrock for the Sea Festival as the Tobago Heritage Festival continues. Then it's time to visit Pembroke for the Salaka Feast. And later, we'll tell you who's this year's Heritage Calypso Monarch. All this and more when Let's Talk Tobago returns. So stay with us. Tobago Heritage Festival from mid July to August 5th. Tobago, it's the place to be. Come on, here, Portes, don't I like it all? Come on, spend July in Tobago. Hawksville House has a cool name and function, as it was designed to capture the breezes rolling off the azure waters of the Caribbean Sea. And this is apparent even as you enter the property. The Caribbean Sea is also the coastal waters bordering nearby Blackrock. The village recently hosted the Blackrock Sea Festival, which is a part of the Tobago Heritage Festival celebrations. Our cameras were there to capture the highlights. Have a look. You have to be an early riser to join the annual Sea Festival in Blackrock. It's a popular event at the Tobago Heritage Festival calendar, which begins with a traditional wake-up call at 5 a.m. That's followed by the procession through the streets alongside drummers, dancers, steel bands, and fisher folk. The march ends at the Black Rock Heritage Park. Then it's time for the boat christening and pulling up the sail. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In the evening, the village comes alive with a combination of songs, dance, limbo, and a drama presentation. This year, the program was introduced by the chief secretary himself, a Black Rock native. I want to also take this opportunity to welcome all of you to the best village in Tobago. The village with the best talented people and the village with the singers with the most melodious voices. So as usual, you shall be treated to an exhilarating performance. So I just ask you to sit back, relax, and enjoy. Thank you very much. As the saying goes, if you don't know where you come from, you won't know where you're going. It's the message of villagers related clearly in their stage production. This year's presentation had a theme, honoring the past, celebrating the future. You see that Moravian missionary? <laughs> Tell me love for God ain't a bad <laughs> Because you know, I need one you know. I let people from Carol feel graphic to them. But you know, me glad how they're keeping the missionary this time, you know, because they're recognizing the work that the Moravians did. Okay, girl. You know that they were the first religious body to come and set up in Black Rock. True? Yes. Oh, girl, let them were first start to recognize the slave like a human being. They mean I say all the slave, them are animal and all these things. Then oh yes, yes. Oh. And the same Holland and Grafton is there. They're them present prospect people really keep up the Moravian church. And them present prospect people, them David, them Archer, and Miss Daisy. After all the Moravians have done for us. A brief history of Black Rock was shared to give a better understanding of the village. And I kept only watch me turn around all the self sideways kind of way. So all of us kind of hear what I'm saying. You would turn so? Mm. Right. That is how I want to you. And you see Mother Sorry tell them? She our Congo woman, you know. You know she? Yeah. You know Mother Farita? You know she? You know she too? You not know she? All of them know she, right? And here now, they bring with African ancestors from quite in Africa to work on the plantations in Grafton and in Holland. 
So when you see black rock people, strong, resilient, we could bounce back from anything. You know? I'm Crystal George for Let's Talk Tobago. This property was once owned by late British Formula One driver Peter Westbury. It was designed by a local architect with typical traditional West Indian features in a style that's modern and sophisticated. The colonial style trim and finials decorating its steep pitched roof are truly distinctive. Now, the National Investment Fund recently launched its public initial offering which is open to the public. An information session was held in Tobago to advise the public on the opportunities and the risks involved and how they can purchase bonds. Here's more. The National Investment Fund, the NIF, opened its initial public offering or IPO on July 11th. So the public in Tobago is being informed about the opportunities for investment in the NIF as well as the inherent risks. The session is in line with Tobago's thrust to increase financial literacy on the island. It's about educating people on how they can become investors to increase their financial security. Sessions like these are our intention to move us away from what we are accustomed to. We are accustomed to savings account, correct? So part of our intention is to have more of our citizens have brokerage account. But if you are to buying in this type of investment, when, uh, let's we speak, you would see that you need to stop, drop, and roll, hurry, because of the narrow window in which we are operating. So what's the NIF about? Basically, it offers fixed income corporate bonds at a minimum price of $1,000. These bonds are tax-free to the individual and are tradable on the stock exchange. They are being offered in three tranches a five-year bond at an interest rate of 4.5%, a bond that matures in 12 years at 5.7%, and the third of 20 years at 6.6%. Returns are paid every six months, with the principal due at maturity. So is this a good opportunity for investment? These bonds, were, there's a local Trinidad and Tobago um, credit rating agency called Caricris, Caribbean Credit Rating Agency Service, an information service. They have given it a double A rating. Um, and a stable. All right, so it's a formal opinion given by a special company on the default risk faced by investors in investing. According to Mr. St. Louis, this means it's a relatively safe investment. The fund is backed by assets from CL Financial Limited. This includes companies such as Republic Bank, Angostura, One Caribbean Media, and Whitco. Generally speaking, all the companies have been solidly dividend paying. Um, in the case of Whitco, they pay on 95% of the profit after tax. They have no debt and they have a um, population or a customer base who dying for the product. It's open to everyone. It's available to whoever wants to invest in. Unlike many of the other issues where there were restrictions on you had to be a citizen of Trinidad, you, you know, you had to be resident. This is open to all classes um, or, or, or anybody, whether local or foreign. The bonds are eligible for insurance companies and pension funds to invest. The IPO closes on August 8th. I'm Kuhn DeFreitas for Let's Talk Tobago. The name Hawksbill comes from the Hawksbill turtle, an endangered species of sea turtles that has a tapered head which resembles a bird's beak. Hawksbills visit the island every year and lay their eggs right on Grafton Beach, not far from the villa. Speaking of endangered, the rare white-tailed saber-wing hummingbird is also under threat. So to protect the species, environmental groups are conducting an assessment of the bird and its habitats. We have more in this story. The Tobago Main Ridge Forest Reserve is unique, and it's not only because it's the oldest protected rainforest in the Western Hemisphere. It's also home to some rare species, like the white-tailed saber-wing hummingbird, it's a vulnerable and environmentally sensitive species, so it's getting some attention under the four-year project called Improving Forests and Protected Area Management in Trinidad and Tobago, IFPAM-TT. Technical coordinators of IFPAM-TT are working with community-based environmental volunteers on a population assessment of the species. The populations are under threat. So this species is specifically only found in Tobago and in Venezuela. That's why it is important. So we need to put things in place to ensure that it is around for a good time to come. And key to the approach is really involving people who live in and around the habitat in the process of trying to keep it alive and well. 
So today we're working with Semper and really some great young people from Speyside to let them be part of the monitoring program. This aspect of the IFPAM TT project involves gathering information on the white-tailed saber-wing hummingbird. This includes its presence, feeding habits, and distribution in and around the Main Ridge Forest Reserve. In this program, I hope to achieve that everything goes smoothly and we get to see a lot of birds. And hope everything turns out okay within the six weeks. Natural disasters like Hurricane Flora in 1963 are among the factors that caused the decline of the white-tailed saber-wing population. The environmental manager at the Ministry of Planning and Development, David Passad, outlines the process for the research in the Speyside community. We thought we'll do a monitoring program over the next six weeks to determine the population levels and see if it still occurs in the area. And we have community groups involved and we're training them right now on going out and run some transect lines on the outskirts of Main Ridge to detect the bird species in the area. So that's basically it for long-term marketing and marketing the ecosystem in it. The Tobago aspect of IFPAM TT is a collaboration between the Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations and the Tobago House of Assembly. The data gathered will be an important part of IFPAM TT's agenda for environmental preservation. Coming up next, we'll take a trip to the village of Pembroke for the Salaka Feast. But first, we have to take a break, so stay with us. Tobago Heritage Festival from mid July to August 5th. Tobago, it's the place to be. Come on here, folks, it's don't I like it all. Come on, spend July in Tobago. Hawksville House was built in the late 90s. It's a 1,275 square foot property standing firmly on the slopes of a shallow hill which rises up from the popular and charming Grafton Beach. From Grafton, we head to Pembroke, the scene of the annual Salaka Feast. It celebrates the harvest of the village as well as the contributions of the ancestors. And as you see in this story, it's also keeping the community's traditions alive. Have a look. <laughs> The Salaka Feast is a celebration that honors our ancestors. The village of Pembroke is home to this tradition of the Tobago Heritage Festival. At this year's production, organizers focused on the importance of drums in reconnecting with Tobago's heritage and recognizing our ancestors. This has been an integral part of the village's culture for generations. So the unveiling of this sculpture means a lot to many Pembroke residents. That is a symbol of all the different yards that we have in Pembroke, the six different yards that we have in Pembroke, we commemorate it with that symbol and this yard. We have the Bongo yard, they have the Pele yard, they have the Manding yard, all the different yards, and that's what we commemorate it. This year's production was entitled Diamonds and Pearls. It celebrated our ancestors and the cultural treasures that they've passed down through the generations with offerings, chants, and songs. The spiritual dances are also a part of the rituals. Those in 
involved in Pembroke's presentation explained the importance of the Salaka feast. My belief is, and the belief of many in Pembroke, is that our ancestors are the people that went before us. My grandmother, my great-grandmother, all of these people taught us very valuable lessons. And sometimes it's just about reconnecting with them in whatever way that you feel you need to reconnect with them. People have different ways in which they reconnect. We have our way in which we reconnect. This is all about just giving thanks and thanks and you know just giving honor for the people who have helped shape us in a very particular kind of way. So this is what people come to expect with Pembroke. It is very important to honor our sisters. This thing that is happening here, everybody that is performing here is a hand down from generation to generation to generation. Everybody that performs here is a part of the yards that go on a long time ago. It's family of the yards. So that's why it is important to keep that tradition. The Salaka Feast in Pembroke is just one of the various activities taking place over two weeks as part of the Tobago Heritage Festival. I'm Amadara Mills for Let's Talk Tobago. This villa is spacious with an open plan living room and dining area that opens onto a wide covered veranda. There are three bedrooms, all with an ensuite and air conditioning that can host a maximum of six guests. Now this, teachers provide knowledge to the next generation of leaders and help them prepare for the world. During their holiday break, principals and teachers in Tobago are themselves getting ready for the new school year through a special professional development workshop. Here's more. It's got the power to change the world, so principals and teachers in Tobago are using their time away from school to the benefit of their students. They attended a three-day teacher's professional development workshop aimed at achieving child-friendly schools on the island. The Child-Friendly School Initiative, it's a great project that um, creates, um, it's centered around the students that are involved in the, um, the school, the school project. Now, the Child Friendly School Initiative, it caters for the safety of the children. It also caters to um, learning collaboratively. The teachers believe initiatives like these will help students reach their full potential. To me, it was very empowering. It was refreshing because there were some things that I would have learned prior to this. I do new things and that's why um, I'm more empowered to go back to my school and to actually display or to relate what has actually done over the three-day course. And when a child enters a classroom, they should feel welcome and inspired to learn. Mr. Beckel says a teacher's interactions with their students help the youngsters develop a passion for learning. We would have looked at the Child Friendly Initiative and that initiative is more or less trying to ensure that we optimize on students' potential, making that school a safe haven that learning can take place, that the students will want to be eager to come to school. It looks at the interaction between teacher and the student, and we know that is in integral in any atmosphere in, in education because once there is that positive relationship between that teacher and that student, their learning will take place. We look at the relationship. Workshops like this one will empower our teachers to prepare the next generation of leaders for the future. The students would definitely benefit that they would be well-rounded. They would have more meaningful learning as I would be catering to one their learning styles. I would be two catering for their involvement and participation and engagement in my classes and I as a facilitator of them. It would also help my students to be more confident, to be more courageous, to have a voice within the classroom. We'd assist them to develop their skills, not only knowledge but skills and value for, 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 for life. And prepare them for life. At the end of the day, that's what we're preparing our students for. The workshop also highlighted positive behaviors within the classroom. This is important in making sure every child is both engaged and productive. I'm Crystal George for Let's Talk Tobago. Hawksbill House is as inviting outside as it is indoors. It's got a sun deck made of teak 
a well-manicured garden, and a large circular swimming pool that's 20 feet in diameter. It also brings the beach to your doorstep. Now, the Trinidad and Tobago Police Service continues to meet with communities across the country to connect with residents and boost the fight against crime. We have highlights of the latest meeting at Bacolet as we hear more from Kern De Freitas. Police response times, vehicle inspections and safe cash transfers for businesses were some of the concerns of Bacolet residents. They sought clarification from senior officers of the Trinidad and Tobago Police Service during their latest town meeting in the community. And I call the Scarborough Police and um, asked, and related to them what I was hearing. And they said that the officers are on patrol at another incident. And I said, well, when will they get to me? And the officer said, I don't know. I said, you can give me an estimate. She said, I can't. When they're done with that, they go come by you. For every strategic um, session that I attended to, that, uh, that came up, uh, but we never came down to really have it. We, we tried to ask the officers to be practical and prioritize, and those reports that are more serious to respond to them immediately. Citizens have been given a mandate to ensure their vehicles comply with inspection guidelines. One resident sought clarity on his particular situation. The licensing officer, whosoever the competent authority, inspect the truck, the taxi, and my vehicle. No, the vehicle registered in my name after seven years. You are telling me that as soon as I leave the licensing office, I must not go to a bay to have it inspected, to have the licensing, to have the sticker attached. Does that really make sense? The law is exactly what it says. You wanted to meet registration, you wanted to put registration. They did not say that, they say from the, the vehicle five years old. Business owners have also been informed that they can get help from police when making cash deposits. Call the police station and, said, and inform the person that you are depositing large amounts of money and need to get some escort to the bank. We provide that sort of security. So we don't want you to just leave your business place and come outside and get real. The town meeting series is geared towards bridging the gap between the police service and communities in Trinidad and Tobago. I'm Kuhn De Freitas for Let's Talk Tobago. Coming up next, we reveal the 2018 Heritage Calypso Monarch. More after these messages. Tobago Heritage Festival from mid July to August 5th. Tobago, it's the place to be. Come and hear folk tales, don't I like it all? Come and spend July in Tobago. The Grafton community is a convenient starting point if you're looking to eat out. Just a five minute stroll will get you to restaurants, a pizzeria, fresh fruit and vegetables a local bar, and a variety of street food. It's also 20 minutes from the Air and Robinson International Airport. So what's heritage celebrations without Calypso? For our final story, we visit the neighboring village of Plymouth for the Heritage Calypso competition. Crystal George has the details. The battle for the title drew patrons from far and wide, with contestants each performing two songs, one heritage-based and the other vintage calypso. Have you ever studied how some young girls get married? They just think of all kind of things when they want a ring. They just sit down and drop up a plan how to trap a man. Last week I see Elsie giving she man Alexander this recipe. That's a heritage calypso monarch of 2018, Gilbert O'Connor, performing his rendition, Murder in the Market. O'Connor won $35,000. Murder in the market, murder. Murder in the market, murder. Run quick, tell officer Spencer. Food importation is murder. Food importation is murder. I wear the old time Tobago farmer. Pull in bull with him motocar. While in the market we ball in murder. 
taking the second position and $20,000 was Giselle Fraser Washington or Gigi. Her contemporary calypso was Morning My Neighbor. And here's a snippet of her vintage Calypso performance of the tune Tempo. And Shamika Dinoon got the nod from the judges for third place. She sang Come Let We Go and the vintage piece Slave. Come let we go, let we go. The chick the heel and toe. Let we go. in Scarborough. Come is the greatest show. So come and let we go. I'm Crystal George for Let's Talk Tobago. And it's time to have your say. It's a segment of our program where we hear from you, the viewers. Let's have a look at who had their say this week. All right, so we're here with Mr. Jordan right now. So we're here with Bruce right now. So we're here with Brent right now. Are we asking Mr. Phil? Are we asking who's Winchester? I can't talk great. We celebrate emancipation for that freedom. That freedom to experience. That freedom to live. That freedom to achieve. You know? This is what emancipation is to me. I don't know what it is to others. We came here from... Africa and now is the time that we spread out so we could emancipate ourselves and get a we have a good time. I think that we should um, celebrate the emancipation to follow up on our heritage and that we should be free. It's a celebration of freedom from hundreds of years of bondage. So I think they should be celebrated all the time. And knowing about our heritage, our culture is, is important, not just for this generation, but the generations behind us to come. So the more that we are involved as people and even getting the younger generation involved in knowing their culture, knowing their heritage, knowing where we as Trinidadians, where we started, where we came from, where we are today and where we want to go in the future to come. The younger ones must know what transpired from their four parents in our country today. We must know where we came from. We are free and it's part of our heritage. We close yet another edition of Let's Talk Tobago. And as always, we thank you for watching. Please email us with your comments or queries about the program. And be sure to visit our website, like our Office of the Chief Secretary Facebook page, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. From our house to yours, I'm Amadara Mills. Along with the Department of Information, Office of the Chief Secretary, Tobago House of Assembly, wishing you a safe and productive week. We leave you with a montage of the Heritage Folk Fair. Do enjoy.